kind of milestones can we expect now for the 400 program? What should we be looking at over the next 42 months in, uh, in anticipation of a production airplane? Well, there's not going to be many milestones, especially over the next, uh, next 18 months. Uh, probably the next major milestone is uh, towards the end of next year. We'll make some announcements on how we've really firmed up a whole lot of things, uh, systems, absolute performance numbers because we're going to have some wind tunnel entries. We're going to be doing a lot of CFD work. We're going to be doing a lot of design work. That's when we'll really nail down things like weights. So, although we, we have a good a high confidence level of what we've published uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, now the detailed design and design studies and design trades start. And so this is going to be, especially for the next 18 months, more of a watching grass grow type of, of program. And we're not going to rush into flight test. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is going to be a little bit of an inversion of a normal general aviation program in that flight test really occurs at the very, very end because flight test is more validation as opposed to development. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of development to be done on this airplane. We have the concept jet that we could do some of the fundamental flight test work and some of the fundamental development work. So we don't need to go out and build an airplane and for the first time figure out what to do. Uh, we got something that we can figure out what to do and we won't make a lot of modifications that we'll just put the modifications on. So when we start flying with the real 400, which will be towards the end of 2010, that's really going to be a full-blown, let's go truly build a conforming aircraft, not the sort of kind of conforming, almost sort of kind of really not totally conforming type of thing that we see so often in this industry. Uh, but it'll be an airplane that we can truly go into flight test. So the flight test program which, of course, are never perfunctionary, but the flight test program should be a pretty straightforward and pretty pretty short one. And so I wouldn't encourage people or have people anticipate a lot of announcements, a lot of photos of, oh, we cut first metal today. We've already cut first metal. It's called the wing. <laughs> you know, we've already got all that stuff. So this is, this is going to be a little bit less of a spectacular, a little bit less of an exciting development program, much more of a crank and grind type of development program. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Can you think of anything at this point that you're willing to talk about that will distinguish the ECJ from the 400? There'll be a lot of changes. There'll be a lot of detailed changes. Probably uh, the biggest one that would be visibly uh, identifiable is the tail probably will shrink a little bit in size. We, we purposely oversized the empennage there the rudder vaders on the ECJ and we know that we've got more than we need so that'll be a, a fine-tuning process. The interior will grow, it'll, it'll change in sophistication, it'll change in, in perhaps even design to some extent but in terms of are there going to be real different changes, again I have to go back to the fact 60% of the airplanes are already defined, 60% mm -hmm. of the airplanes are already flying mm -hmm. and it's called the Eclipse 500. So the wing's not going to change, the landing gear's not going to change, the systems aren't going to change. Uh, the engine is very straightforward. It's the engine basically that's on the Mustang with one major exception. Pratt is making some changes in the fuel metering unit to make it act and look like to the fade act like a, a, a PW610. Okay. So we won't even be changing the fade act. Uh, we'll be new software load obviously with different fuel schedules. But the fundamental fate act, will, the hardware will remain exactly the same, and Pratt's going to be modifying the 615 to look and act electrically like a 610. Well, you've now had all of 24 hours to gauge pu the public reaction to E400s that are available for sale. What have you learned in the last 24 hours? It's what we expected. It's what we hoped. Uh, people love it. Now, recognize that in the last 24 hours, the only people we've talked to about this and more importantly, the only people who have had ability to buy one are cu existing customers. And the response is pretty staggering already. Uh, I don't have the exact numbers as of this hour, but I know through noon today, uh, which is less than 24 hours, we had sold over 70 aircraft. Uh, so that's a pretty nice response since each one of those incomes includes a $100,000 deposit. Um, and of course, we only had about 10% of our customer base here uh, in Albuquerque for this event. 
and so we're just now starting to talk to a lot of other customers around the nation around the world but the feedback is very very positive the the, the more positive the more fun thing is the number of calls and the number of people that we just know personally and people who are just sending stuff into the company saying I want one now and it's like no sorry this this is the 400 many many ways is I, I don't know if I'd call it a reward but we recognize we value we appreciate the loyalty the support frankly the patience that all of our 500 customers have exhibited and so we wanted to give them first shot Aero TV is brought to you by Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly and fun to own. The jet for you. How does this change the game? I don't know, because I'm not managing those companies. And how they choose to respond or not respond, as the case may be, uh, is totally up to the management of all these other companies. Now, I'll say this. Most of the other companies in this industry are managed by really smart guys, mm -hmm. really smart people who really care and really work hard. I have an infinite amount of respect for the management, for the leaders of all of the general aviation companies. But when the rules change and you have a CEO of one of the major companies saying, I haven't seen rules change, that sort of says, uh-oh, you know, warning flag, danger, Will Smith. And I think that this is always one of the basic challenges in business. I, I lived through an era of this in the technology business when guys like Ken Olson, one of the great, great, great entrepreneurs who founded DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, stood up and made a speech at the point when, when Bill and Paul were writing BASIC at Harvard and saying, Ken was saying, PCs will never amount to anything. They're not real computers. <laughs> and less than 12 years later, Compaq Computer bought DEC, and they're gone, as is Wang as is data general, as is microdata, as is computer automation. I mean, the list just sort of goes on. In fact, there was a whole industry of mini computers that they're gone. They're completely gone today. And so I've lived through that kind of earth-shattering, continental shift type of change in industry. And it all comes down to how does management, how does leadership, how do the people at the head of the company react when there's change? Because if they spend time saying, it ain't ever going to happen, they do so at their own peril. Is, is everything we've done at Eclipse, is anything that we've done at Eclipse not doable by someone else? We're not smarter than anybody else. We're just willing to take more risk and do things in a different fashion. Sometimes that's a big advantage. But we haven't done anything that uh, a Cessna or a Beechcraft or a Piper or a, uh, you, you know the names mm -hmm. couldn't do themselves. Will they choose to? I haven't been invited to many strategic planning meetings lately, so I don't know.